Ooh, we're live. It's recording. I see myself. We've got our Mevo back. Mevo's back. You're going to direct this episode? Yeah, you're not allowed to touch it. I got sweaty fingers anyway. Uh, God. Having sweaty hands is, it really is a disability. Not, it's not up there with the other disabilities, but it is marginally terrible all the time. In today's digital age, with all the screens, it's hard. You are at a disadvantage. And in Florida. Yeah. So I'm outside on my iPhone. I'm just like, well, I guess I just can't use this thing. <laughs> yeah, it get they get hot. Well, my hands, my hands are sweaty right now, and I'm totally fine. Except for the sweaty hands. Always Probably. sweaty. Yeah. Playing video games growing up. No one wanted me to lose because then they'd have to use my controller. Yeah. With the gray sweat on there. So that's Remember how you bring days. it into Sweat Equity Podcast. <laughs> a little sweat action. I really didn't even mean to bring that up. The titular part of this podcast, the sweat part. Speaking of sweat, go freshbooks.com forward slash sweat. That's our sponsor. Hook it up. You haven't done your taxes yet. Have you done your taxes? Oh, yeah. But for next year, have you started getting act, like proactive, helping yourself? Oh, yeah. With FreshBooks. So you can go to gofreshbooks.com forward slash sweat. Our listeners, get the hookup. Holler if you hear me. Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah. Holler. Woo. Holler. Yeah. Um, I- <laughs> Holler. I guess I am a listener. I have to listen to you. So That's true. <laughs> you do. A lot more than just on my listeners. Listen <laughs> up. Go to go, gofreshbooks.com forward slash sweat. I just touched your foot on accident. Uh, you are off all of a sudden. I, have, I only slept 90 Ooh. minutes, man. I am feeling good. Feeling, I feel drunk, honestly. Cool. Super drunk. You yeah. get some gems out of you. No, I'm going to go drive right after this, so it'll be fine. Ooh. GoFreshBooks.com for it's a sweat. So, uh, before we get into it, what have you been working on? Anything? Anything of note? Uh, I think that's a good opening template question. What's, yeah, to hit me without out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll answer for you. Uh, how's your hemorrhoid? Oh, that's what you're getting at. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we should always ask, what are we working on? Yeah. You know? I'm always working on myself. Sure. And now my butt is part of it. But it's it's still a part of my life. But Fred's still there. I'm calling it was him Fred. Alfonso. Oh, Alfonso? Yeah. Alfonso Ribeiro? <laughs> Carlton? I think I have seen it dance. <laughs> like a white guy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... it's so, a, Alfonso, he's still alive. Yeah, well, I mean, it's going to take, like I said, it's going to take a couple weeks we for it to, to go away. It, like, shrieks a little bit. I mean, we can talk about it all you want. It I seems just, a, you seem a little bummed. I'll just give you, you know... First 90 seconds of every episode, we want to do the hemorrhoid update. Is that what we're doing now? Well, people care. No, they don't. I saw it on the message boards. Yeah, LOL. Eric's in pain. Well, let's let's just get into the episode. How about that? Good. Uh, Hi. God almighty. This is, this is. This is the Sweat Equity Podcast. Jeez, you are sounding drunk. Dude, I, I, last week, look, can we talk about some sleep hygiene? Yes. Uh, you are the wellness guy. <laughs> out of the two of us. Out of the uh, two yeah, of I us. Guess. Out of this duo. Uh, out of <laughs> I would say um, sleep hygiene, I used to think you're kind of a wuss if, you know, you couldn't get through a day. You're like, oh, I only slept three hours. I read a joke on Twitter. I don't even know who wrote it. I, I read it like seven years ago. It's one of the. Fun. It's like, hey, no one. Hey, guy, no one cares how much you slept last night. Like, yeah, it's kind of like the old man back pain I've right. talked about forever. No one gives a shit. Yeah, I see. I've always been a, like, I don't sleep that much. Like, I'm good with seven hours. I never sleep more than seven hours, but like six is usually where I'm sitting. Six, so like six is good for me. Yeah, I don't always know. I, you know, lots of people. It's like eight hours, and then that's the minimum. And then if anything less than that, don't even talk to them all day. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. I haven't had my coffee. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, you know, sleep's important. 
<laughs> it's wow. definitely important to do it. I, you know, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I don't I what try not of? to get mad at people anymore for bitching about it because, you know, I'm I'm abnormal. I know that most people don't have the John Gruden 317 a.m. Natural wake up call. Are you going to bed at nine, ten? I'm, I'm, yeah, like I'm nine or ten, yeah, and four is when I, I, I fall asleep at nine a lot of, a lot of times. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, we have, you have kids, they're five, six, six and three, three and six uh, foot three, six foot three, yeah, who's drunk now? <laughs> yeah, six, they're six and three, so it's not, it, you don't really do anything once they go to sleep. Like you might hang out. For like an hour, it's ex- I'm done. When they're right. in bed, like that is it. That's all my energy. Because then it's just lay in bed and see how it goes from there. <laughs> Maybe I'll make it through a whole episode of a TV show. <laughs> Maybe my wife will touch me. Maybe something, you know. But usually I fall right asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the we got the two little babies, eighteen months and uh, five months, and it's like, okay, I, I'm o- I'm always doing the math. Like I'm like, okay, if I go to sleep now. It's like it's like ten o'clock. If I go to sleep now, I can get solid, solid six, because I want to wake. I want to keep going on this four a.m., uh, four thirty wake up time. My wife basically called me lame for doing it, which what? doesn't help. <laughs> I need doesn't to talk help to my, her. my confidence uh, at home. Um, I was like, d- shouldn't I have more dis- discipline? Don't you want that? Isn't that a thing? Is it lame because you're posting it on? social media or is well, it lame because you're waking up early i did I that for three weeks as like an accountability buddy <laughs> almost don't I, call it that i did it i did it for uh, well you know what for something that i felt kind of douchey for doing it i probably have more people like secretly talk to me about it like than anything else i put online consistently what like, do you even, mean secretly talk to you like, like in a parking not, garage like, no one's comment coats? no one's commenting on it oh you know and saying like uh, anything but like when I talk to people in person, they see it and then they want to talk to me about it. Oh, real so, life Facebook. Yeah, IRL in real life, mm-hmm. as they call it. And so, I you know, I to- I totally give you credit for it. It it does help a lot, especially when you do have kids. You're not doing anything after eight o'clock when they're really little. Yeah. And ours are babies, so here's the problem though. You're like, cool. If I go to bed now, I get like four or five hours straight. That's good, but. It doesn't work like that because the the baby will wake you up and like. As soon as you start thinking that way, that's like a oh I got to do this now thing. And that's oh no, what if I don't fall asleep right away? Oh, then, <laughs> then you know, s- snake eating its own tail maybe. Uroboros. Does that make sense? I think that's what it's called. What is it? Uroboros. That's what that's called. Yeah, I think I learned that from that movie adapt adaptation. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Is yeah. It Spanish. No, I don't know. Probably <laughs> Greek, Roman. Oh, okay. Something I don't know, but it's uh, it's one of those things. Sleep hygiene. I don't know why we don't have a bed sponsor. I think Casper doesn't come to Florida. Mm. I think that was what our uh, our agency told us. But I said, I, I I've heard like we're sleeping all wrong. <laughs> we didn't know it. Yeah. We're also pooping it? all wrong. Well, we shouldn't be pooping on toilets. Should be pooping into a hole in the ground. Apparently, do you believe in that? I get well, at this point. I guess I don't know what I believe. Or is it just good marketing? Is it like K? Uh, what is it? K Diamonds? Who what from the whole company? The c- company that did the Squatty toilet Potty, holes. Who should be a sponsor here? Because I gave Squatty Potties out to everybody for Christmas. Um, is Squatty Potty kind of like? Well, that's the idea. Diamond engagement ring. <laughs> That's I mean that's the best marketing of all time, right? Uh yeah. It didn't it didn't exist. They created a thing, a ritual that didn't exist and they they artificially inflated how much diamonds should cost. Yes. <laughs> I think we might talk about this every episode. This or Luxotica. We haven't talked about I this <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> it's monopoly. We haven't kept any we haven't kept it all the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, this let me ask like you. It's like a bar. Eighty percent are coming in new. That's what John Taffer tells me. <laughs> You're gonna get people sick. I know he's hey, my hero. How t- high off the bed, off the ground, is your bed Ooh. that you sleep in? Uh, probably two feet. Okay, three Did feet. Some, uh, two ours feet. is like six and a half feet off the. It's I don't preposterous. Like that. I don't like that. I don't understand it. I was hoping you could explain to me the reasoning behind it. There, but there like, I- girls like these big tall beds. 
that if especially if you have a kid fall out of it, which we've had both our kids <laughs> at like really? yes, oh yeah, at young ages, old ages, yeah. I I just don't understand it. I mean, it's cool to be able to go down there and play commando underneath the 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 twelve inch opening underneath it, but that gets old after a year. I like storage underneath my bed, but not too much. Um, I I will say there. I'm lo- I'm trying to look this up right now. The <laughs> high versus low bed. <laughs> How it's not high that important? Uh, I'm I'm kind of curious because I have thought about this, and I bet I bet you think this is boring for the listeners, but I bet a lot of people are, are trying to figure this out. So for most knee levels, about 16 inches to 24 inches off the ground. At this height, people can usually put both feet firmly on the ground and push off the bed with their knees bent. So if you go too low, you're you're like a heroin addict. Like you do the mattress on the ground. the ground. I've done that, you know, in my uh, bachelor days. Oh, yeah, me too. It, it, you basically are in an air mattress all the time. Yeah. I remember it being way dirtier because mm-hmm. so much dust and just, you know, just regular dirt that chalks up. Yeah. So you can't go too low. Yeah. I mean, I get it coming off the ground a little bit, but it's it ours is like it's literally four feet high. I it, think it's like uh, <laughs> it's like doing the high jump to it's get a, up there. Yeah. It's a, a thing to get in and out of bed. And you don't have the dogs. No. Yeah, dog. So that's another thing. We got to keep it a little bit low so the old girl can get in. Uh, old girl punky can get in bed. Oof. And dominate. Man. You're getting it from all angles. So that's the thing, man. Like I, I used to bitch about the dogs being in bed, and I was like, this isn't good for either of us. You know this, right? Like, it, and it's not good for the psyche of like our relationship with the dogs. <laughs> they shouldn't be on even ground with us. Yeah, I think. I. That's from Caesar. That's like Caesar uh, Milan will tell you that. Well, he also says it dis- it, it's all discipline of the owners, too. So uh, that's bringing back to 4 a.m. wake-ups. That's kind of – and I heard Tim Ferriss, even though not I'm not the biggest Tim Ferriss fan, talk about he's got a cool bed, and he puts he, – it's almost like a like a thin water bed Ooh. layer, and it, it cools your side. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Because I run hot. Oh, I'm all the sweaty time. all the time at night. Right. So he he said, for a lot of men, you're a lot hotter usually, and so his side of the bed has uh, ha- it's at like 71 or something like that. Like, oh, that's cool. per- like perfect temperature for him. Yeah. Yeah. My wife tried to buy me a cool pillow, and it was it it was like sleeping on a, I don't know, like a latex bodysuit. Those are gross. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen those. The, I I had one for a minute, and I was like, this is going to the dog. Yeah, it was immediately it up the smell, window. They smell. I don't like them. I, Mine didn't last that long to smell. I was told to get a fan. That's uh, that's our solution. So. You ever heard of a fan? That's what happens when you marry a comedian. Pretty, pretty curt <laughs> options. So uh, you just had your kid's birthday. Yeah. Yeah, three-year-old birthday party at the house. Let's give some practical tips on um, on the birthday. Yeah, with don't the little kids. The a big one. You had a good theme. W- okay, well, we, that wasn't actually the idea. Did was, anybody do it? No, no. Oh, <laughs> that was just to drum up attention. Oh, no. Well, I had said that we were gonna have everybody dress up like old grannies, and then I was thinking anybody, all the old people who didn't dress up, tell them what a great costume they had, but. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I ended up drinking and forgetting about it. Anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, like a few years ago, I realized the number one cardinal rule with the kids' birthday parties, don't have them at your house because mm. people will linger because you have a kid's birthday party at like noon or one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and if you're at home drinking and it's just like, oh, they're, the parents are drinking, well, I might have a drink. And then it's just like. Oh, I guess you're my new best friend. You're staying here till dark and um, don't know how to tell you to leave sort of thing. <laughs> so we violated that rule immediately. So it, going forward, you, do the Chuck E. Cheese, get it out of the house. Go don't to plan it like you would before you had kids. Yeah. Because before you have kids, you're like, hey, man, all day, just come over. I don't give a shit. Yeah, like, just sleep on the that. couch. Yeah. Sleep wherever. Do don't shrooms. go to sleep. Do yeah, whatever you it's want, all good. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that rule was violated. But, I mean, it wasn't like a problem this time, just in the past. We had thought that my wife's birthday is right next to our son, so we were thought we were making it like, you know, half adult party, half kids party, but 
Yeah. We're all old now, so it's just like, eh, I'm yeah, tired, all, so I'm just going to get out of here. It's not even, I was going to try to uh, tough it out and get out, get over there, let let the wife sleep and uh, take the two kids, but they, it's their nap time, and then I was like, I, ain't. I, I, I won't even be like, I'll just like sit in the corner and have to watch both of them. Right, yeah. It's not even fun. No, I get it. Uh, it's uh, that, it, Be practical about it. You know, the kids aren't going to remember coming to my house when they're 18 months old. Exactly. You know, I like, say that all whatever. the time. They're not going to remember if I'm working a lot. <laughs> yeah, right now, this is the time to do it, you know. That's uh, that's what I had in my head, except I didn't explain that yeah. to my loved one. Um, one other thing. Okay, so oh, yeah, yeah. we rented a, a giant water slide, and... Immediately, my son goes down at the first time. I don't tell him there's like a little water pool at the end. Mm-hmm. He goes under the water. He's traumatized all day. <laughs> Doesn't go down it without me going down it. Oh, but no. we had a friend of ours gave us uh, uh, another smaller inflatable like water slide thing that was not nearly as big. Mm-hmm. Our new thing is uh, the kids all played on that one. Like that was the one they wanted to actually play on. So you went to the hassle of like renting, a, right. Like a big, the big inflatable. Like it looks like a um, bounce a, house. Yeah, with it, water. It's like a little hill almost, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it got used, but it wasn't. You know, it's it like wasn't a, the hit. It's like a imagine like a a ramp almost. Yeah. That kind of forty five degree angle. Yeah. But you, it has a it has stairs in the back. It's inflatable, like the bounce house. Yeah, so use your words. Next time is going to be. I mean, we'll just, people don't need the layout of the bounce house water slide. Who cares? My point is, don't spend the money on like the big water slide. Yeah, no. <laughs> you get a bunch of little ones, and they won't be traumatized like mine was. <laughs> don't rent a water slide and get a uh, get the little guys. Yeah. That's a that's a good time. That's what I did for my twenty first birthday. Was I did slip and slides? In yeah, my parents' front yard. Slip and slides are fun. They're, the cool thing about the one we got was it has an incline on it, so there's uh, gravity doing some work for you. Because we had slip and slides, uh-huh. and the kids just want me to throw them down. I did it one time. Stupid. Oh. Shouldn't have shown them my strength. Yep. Then You're all like, day, daddy, throw me. I'm ketogenic, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I got two torn obliques uh, over here. I diet. Okay. Yeah. But, um, I eat really healthy, guys. I'm the wellness guy. <laughs> I'm the wellness dad. Okay? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Well, show us the wellness in you for the next four hours and push us around this shitty slip and slide. Yeah. I forget. You forget that repetitive thing. If it's going to be like fun. You're like, oh, this will be fun for them. And then it's like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. I'm getting yeah. a lot better. And then times 20 kids. Yeah. Seeing the future of uh, my work. Well, uh, so... I don't know how to get into the other thing we we're going to talk about. Uh, well, I guess online there's been a I, the gun or do you want to get to? Oh, we go Zucker? straight from birthday parties. Do you want to go Zuckerberg? Oh no, let's talk about guns. <laughs> I wasn't really sure what what you were going to get to about the guns, so let's hear it. Well, I was thinking about it. Uh, it. The debate in our house. It's not really a debate. I agree with my wife, so we're not really arguing about it. But I'd say. Um, and I think a lot of us are in this zone where it's like, I'm not really extreme on guns one way or the other. Like I, I, I'm fine with you having them if you're super responsible. And the people I know, like personally, the people I know, most of them are like insanely responsible to the point of like, why would you even have a gun locked in two cases? Like, yeah, for protection. Yeah, that's where I am. Uh, I've never shot a gun. Actually, we should go do that. Yeah. You gotta um, at least shoot the gun. I'm not against so that it. you can be like, okay, this is fun. It's I, fun to shoot guns for sure. I don't go. Yeah, I'm sure. Because like, when am I gonna? I've have gone hunting excuse? and didn't even shoot. I sat in a fucking deer stand for five hours <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Before you like, left, you weren't like, can I just fire off a round real quick? It's four a.m. So for some reason, we have to go at like we had to go to Georgia when I was. At Auburn, you had, we had to go to this property in Georgia that's an hour away. And then it, you lose an hour driving there. We got up at like two, and I, bar- I, I think I came home from the bars and just slept. Oh, you're saying you just weren't thinking straight? No, to- no, no. I just was like, there was no like hangout time beforehand. It was like, all right, you're gonna go with Lincoln. You go over there, and he's like, all right, now you. No, I was saying at the end when you're like, oh, we're not catching anything. Be oh, like, I oh, can I like just fire up? Again? I think I was like thrown up. I was just like oh. <laughs> barfing from from the booze the night before. Yeah, just... a gunshot doesn't exactly uh, sit well with a hangover. No, and my buddy, 
my, one of my best friends is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you're scared of heights and stuff, but uh, I want you to get in this. You have to do that lumberjack, like, like, really? like you're hugging it yeah. to get up. It's some kind of seat he had. And I was like, oh, fuck, okay. That that made me puke a little bit on myself. And then uh, I sat up there, and I was just, like, shivering, like, like trying to get in the zone. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fuck up this deer. <laughs> and then I five hours later, he's like, all right, let's go. And he's like, oh, no, I fell asleep for, like, most of the time. And I was like, <laughs> what? The, what are we doing out here? Why yeah. did you do that? I was so pissed. I anyway. think a lot of people look at hunting as, like, one of those things that's not super fun while you're doing it. Unless, I mean, if you kill something, that's good, I guess. But that's also, I mean, is that fun? It's my, fun after is the point. It's my, like it's it's after fun. Once you're done and you're back warm and everything, you can talk about all the, how Law puked on himself and all that stuff. Yeah, it's like fishing. Fishing isn't really fun necessarily <laughs> for me. It's it's like a lot of work for not a lot of uh, return in the pleasure department. But there's something satisfying at the end of the night. Or like when the sun's going down and you're grilling. Yeah. Um. I my fitness goal long term is to do one of those crazy uh bow bow hunts. Um, I want to shoot. I want to get good at a bow. I don't know why, and I want to do one of those ones like uh, like where you have to like be in really good shape to be able to do it. Like you really hunt. What do you do? Like run? To yeah. You have to like. It's run. like a race, and you gotta. No, no, no. no. It's just like like. Like you just have to be in good shape to to get certain animals on uh, on like mountains and stuff. Oh, you're just saying just to go on a, a difficult hunt. Yeah, like my it's like my own like tough mutter. Gotcha. Like I got to get to that, you know. Yeah, I don't know. The, a lot of the uh, the hunters that I see, it's like they have like super nice trucks, ATVs that are like right. awesome, and right. it's like they got all this shit. It's like make it a little bit harder on yourself. Like, come on, man. No, I, I don't get that part I of it. Like the Rogan. Uh, Cameron Haynes style where there you have to like you have to be able to run with a bow yeah or be in like ridiculous shape to be able to do it yeah I think I that's where I got that the like delayed fun idea is from one of those hunters on Rogan I sure. said that but um yeah I don't, delayed gratification I don't man know. so what was the gun debate I just it, I was getting some hate because I from my uh, friends because I I reposted what my wife put and I I agree it it's weird. It's weird how divisive uh, the gun control debate is. It, to me, I just get frustrated because nothing changes. Yeah. Literally, nothing changes. Yeah, it's. I don't, I don't. I don't get it either. Like, why can we just not make it a little bit harder? And then they'll say, "Well, it doesn't matter." It's like, "Well, can we just try it maybe first? Yeah, let's maybe try just it. try it let's first. Try it a little bit. Okay. So maybe it was a pain in your ass for." Three days. You well, didn't I, get your assault rifle. I, I do Sorry. think a lot of these massacres are impulsive. I, uh, yes. Speaking <laughs> of delayed gratification, I feel like this is the other way. This is way the other way, and I feel like, yeah, maybe they plot it for, they've been thinking about it for a while, but don't underestimate the laziness yeah. of Americans when they, the, even if they're pissed, right? Yeah. I don't, you know, it may, it may be in that meantime, something happens to interject in this timeline, right? So let's say the scenario, you know, you make it a little bit harder to get a gun, and maybe in the three-day waiting period or whatever, whatever you have to do to jump through the hoops to get it, maybe in that in that time, uh, someone's like, hey, have you been taking your meds? You're like, you should be taking them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, the ones, maybe that happens. Yeah, I mean, that's not that. The ones prescribed by the doctor, take them. Well, that, I mean, that's the other part of this, too. It's like... All of them are like white dudes that have some kind of uh, mental illness. Yeah, but they're taking something. Yeah, and it's not uh, now. Anti-psychotics. I don't know. I think that's a symptom and not an effect. But because I, I don't know. I don't think there's a lot. Of, I'm sure there's mixing going on. You're oh, taking sure. like a SSRI or whatever they take, and then something else. You know, maybe cocaine or whatever can really mess up your brain chemistry, and then you're just. Not the same person. So my thing is, like, I, it kind of brought me to leadership because I was thinking about what to talk about on here. I have a bunch of stuff, but they're all kind of like, you know, I, I've got a little bit of a lot of topics to, for this podcast, and I, I'm trying to pregame a little bit more, and I'm thinking about the leadership of, of the country, and it's kind of like with this stuff, it's just really frustrating that literally nothing will change, and I know it. 
you know it. Most people that really think logically about human behavior, they know it in this country. And I don't know. I don't. That's I, so frustrating. And, and I was comparing it to like when you work in an office, and you're clearly a lot better than the person that's managing you. That I mean, that's an old trope frustration. You're really frustrated at work because you know, you know, you're better than whatever you're doing, and no one's recognizing it. And there, you just know, like you're gonna have to clock in on Monday, and you're gonna punch in, and it's gonna be the same thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we can take that. We gotta be more positive than that. You know, let's take my seven percent for seven percent of optimism. I mean, because if you don't like, wh- then what? We're just like, oh, we'll just let it keep happening. No, I mean, what happens is th- a new news story happens. Right. Well, and I we mean, go, well, well, there was that thing, and then we follow that butterfly, and we just yeah. go, okay. It, it's just weird to me that like it always comes down to money. You know, the the NRA pumping money into politicians and all that, but like. There's absolutely money to be made if you want to turn these regulations into jobs, like turn create new gun uh, mental health guys that have to evaluate you. And then, you know, all that like there's if you're creative, there's money to be made. I just don't understand why they can't just take away. You know, why can't we just step back and just uh, and then make it tougher? There's a slippery slope argument, you know, for every every time you regulate, there's going to be more of a black market. Sure. Fine. That's fine. But that, like, to do that because of the fear of doing something is is kind of weird to me. It, I, I get it. I think that's a hundred percent that way with drugs. Um, For sure, yeah. And and I'm not saying like if you deregulate drugs uh, tomorrow, everything will be fine. That needs to be a slow deregulation kind of thing. I don't think you do that. You don't do that in like one week. You know, like that. It, uh, this everybody will go crazy. But I'm saying, like, with guns, it's like I've, I've heard of the technology where your fingerprint is on the trigger. Mm-hmm. I, you always hear this stat. I wonder if it's even true. It, there's more guns than people in the country. I, I mean, it seems yeah. right because most guys I know that have a gun have five. Yeah, I got three. But, like— You have three? Yeah. Uh, so it's like— But I don't have an assault rifle. Like, I have a shotgun and two two pistols for my house. Like, But, like— Realistically, if somebody's breaking into my house, there's a baseball bat next to my that's what I'll pick. Like to get into my gun safe, it's not easy. Yeah. It's like I'll just I'll say, Fuck it, just give me this you know, like I'm you know, my kids are on the other side of the house, I'm not wasting time, so it's like that's just a relic sitting in my house now at this point. <laughs> just a just a relic that <laughs> Yeah, it's just a, a an homage to who I used to be. <laughs> the guy who had the balls to open the gun safe. That in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> I just I, the thing that drives me crazy is that like people think, oh, we got to keep our guns in case the government comes after us. Have you seen military technology that if they really want to come after you, right? Like you're not doing anything that that can stop the government's technology. Like it's just and silly. It's a it's a lot of the same people. The Venn diagram is very uh, very big in the middle. It's the same people that don't realize their voice is being recorded by Alexa, Siri, yeah. Google Home. Uh, and they're like, why did this ad just pop up? We were just talking about it. Right. It's like, dude, are you serious? Yeah. Like, why do you think these things are 50 bucks? <laughs> this is like crazy technology. Yeah. This is like, It was brand new, and it was like, hey, we're just going to put this in the iPhone. Don't worry about it. No, no, just take it. <laughs> Trust me. Oh, and uh, well, you need I have to, go to pay your, you something, right? You need to go in your settings to make sure it doesn't listen all the time. Yeah. It'll still listen. Yeah. Uh, so bringing this to kind of leadership, I was thinking about – Zuckerberg. I don't know much about that story. Um, what's going on lately? I know there's some Cambridge analytics. Yeah. B- uh, my understanding is uh, security breach on a lot of these trashy like uh, like personality a, quizzes. Yeah, there was like a quiz app that was mining all what the Game data. Game of Thrones character right. are you? <laughs> Jon Snow. I knew it. Good. <laughs> Good job. You just got a lot of housewife, uh, like bored mom, or like really, really bored at work people. It's you like, got their info. Yeah. Why do you want to be somebody else, guys? So the uh, what's happened? The IPO's gone. You can't really look it up, huh? I uh, got it on my phone, but it, um, the IPO just a lot of advertisers I mean, pulling out IPO, of Facebook. Not IPO. Uh, the stock went down. Yeah. Like crazy. But here's the, my thing with. I was thinking about leadership. I was thinking about Trump. I'm not gonna rag on that because that i feel like that's exhaustion 
um, from all sides. And we just did gun talk, so I should probably take it easy I on the politics. I felt like our take was refreshing enough. Yeah, I felt refreshed, too, I by our take. I heard anybody talk about the kind of being in the middle. Yeah. That mm. that in itself is the extreme It does need opinion. to be, yeah, it does need to be uh, a little bit more hey man, level-headed Maybe talk. a little bit more regulation, um, and maybe, uh, you know, I'm not a big create jobs by government guy, but, you know, don't do it like the TSA, like legit have them <laughs> do a test or yeah. don't be the TSA or DMV. I think TSA is actually private. It doesn't. Yeah, it can be private. Set aside a hundred million dollars right. to create this thing. You know, s- hire these this firm. You know, it's right. It's get there. F- get corporate consolidation. Get four companies to just be the four that the government lets you do it, and then <laughs> the Koch brothers owns one of them, and then you can get certified, and you know. Competition will breed a better kind of certification process. I can't tell if you're being. I'm ca- I, I, you're I, like I I'm talking out of both sides of your mouth. It talk, sing songy, but I I don't like either side of this. I don't like the extremes of either of this. Um, no one wants to get to the root of the issue, and regulations. Uh, it's not really a fix, but it's worth trying out. Yeah. I know Australia did it. Uh, yeah. a similar kind of ilk where they had a lot of massacres and it seemed to work out okay for them. And yeah. You know what? People get in bar fights. You know you don't get in fights anymore because cause it's like, man, that guy might have a gun. I don't know. That So wait. Like so people now like, are you saying it's a good thing? Yeah, that's a good You're thing. You're all over the road, man. Dude, yeah. I know, but I, I, I am on both middle. sides. I'm right in the middle, man. And and my thing is like, wouldn't you like to get in like a, see old school bar fights? Like, 1950s style, right? Yeah, put your dukes up. Hey, you offended my lady. And then it's like, let's take this outside. Yeah. That shit Dang, doesn't happen this anymore. This whole thing. It's whoever has the Irish. Since I was in high school, it's whoever had the best weapons won. <laughs> <laughs> like, it eventually got Whoa. to that point. Yeah. Jesus. For real. Someone would be. Someone would bring with that. Your that private Catholic high school was a lot rougher than my <laughs> private Catholic high school. We had to fend off all the fathers. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I was thinking of Trump. And Trump does this move. Uh, he talks a lot of shit like he's going to do something and doesn't do it. Right? Mm-hmm. It's uh, There's a lot of leadership issues in business like that. We're going to do a lot of things. I'm a figurehead, but you're not actually doing anything in reality. Right? So what happens, like, I, I think we brought this up before. I, I love the str- – I kind of like it in business a little bit because what happens is – Zuckerberg says something, Facebook's going to do this. Like, we're not going to have as much uh, news stories, like uh, your classic news outlets, news stories in your news feed. It's going to be more personalized. It's not going to be brand heavy. And then, like, <laughs> a week later, they're like, yeah, we tried it. We're not. We're going back to the old way. But yeah. they don't, you don't do a, P, a press release for that, right? Right. So I think that's always interesting when you say you're going to make big moves as a company, as the leader of a company. Um, I'm guilty of this here on a small level where I'd be like, we got to do this and this and this. And then I set aside five minutes every day to let you let me plan think, big. Yeah. Well, this is how this is going to work out. I think, okay, buddy. I think goal setting in a business way, if we're doing it for ourselves, we weren't tr- treating ourselves as a client. So that's that's number one. Uh, and we weren't creating time to do that. So w- our whole principle of solving how at Tokabaga Consulting, um, tokoworks.com, T-O-C-O-W-O-R-K-S.com, is, uh, is I would get on the whiteboard. This all happened just out of organically. I get on the whiteboard and I go, okay, go on the right side. What do you want to do? And I'd write all, all the goals out. On the left side, I'd go, we're here. And then here's the timeline. Mm-hmm. You, I think goal setting is about doing short-term, long-term goals at the same time, right? Yeah. Well, goal setting is not the problem. It's the follow-through. Oh, no, no. Execution plan, for sure. But I'm saying, like, you got to do that part first. Sure. Um, and I think in some weird way, venting it out to you and uh, whoever's in this office working, it helps me stay on top of it a little bit in my head. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I know I, I could be. I'm gonna get a. You uh, do it at home, right? I'm gonna get a mannequin to sit in here and. <laughs> yes, law, and then I'll have like a little recording. I'll talk to. Good Alexa. idea, put buddy. It, put the Alexa hockey puck in in the in the doll and. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but I'm saying like, I, I wanted to have a big project management board, a Lego strips. Mm hmm. Yeah, that would have been cool. Um, cause I saw expensive though. No, I saw Lego rollers as like some kind of wallpaper. Uh, yeah, somebody got those for my kids and they're on my sliding glass doors forever now. But good for, do they stick? Yeah. Well, the, the side that you don't, that you want to be able to peel off that stays the Lego themselves in terms of like putting stuff on them doesn't really because they're not lego brand they're just uh, knocking off they're like rubber almost ew all yeah. right well ew. we can probably buy used legos and figure that out okay because that was an old idea and i i was like yeah but we're digital you know people have to see it remote you know you i mean you're some days it's it's takes too long to get into the office for you so it's not it's not worth the time yeah. driving you know it could be an hour and a half two hours um of just driving to get here and back. I don't I think it's not worth it all the time. No. But now I was like, oh rarely worth it. Do <laughs> what do you mean? You're right here right now. But I was like, oh get a drop camera. And you take a click of it, like a yeah. desk cam. And uh, that would solve a lot of stuff. Anyway, I'm derailing. So wait, leadership. <laughs> That's what we were talking So how do you lead? How do you how do you become a leader when like maybe you uh you're forced into it? You know? Mm -hmm. I feel like uh bringing up dad stuff again i i feel like that's a lot of being a dad and that's why there's dad jokes and uh, as, you know i spent all right here, here's a good example oh boy i um last night i had a lot of, i have a lot of work to do it's like stressed out but i promised i would uh mount this other tv uh this tv wall mount in my other kid's room i've already done one and supposedly this is the same one the same exact arm it, it wasn't. Stupid. It's a different brand. Why would you think that? Total different brand. I didn't buy it. And so I go, all right, I'm going to take an hour. I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to do this fast. And <laughs> two hours later, I was like, I don't trust the stud I put it in. <laughs> I think I think it hit, I think I only got drywall. I don't trust it. I'm not, I'm, I tried to put an anchor in. And that's like dad frustration of just like, you know, I should be the leader in the house and not be like the. Yeah, but. Someone calling? What does that mean? Oh. Does it still work? Still recording. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. Someone's calling. Who the guess. hell's calling you? Um, I think it's our our bud, friend of the program, Rob Cressy of uh, Cressy Media, Bacon Sports Podcast, doing a lot of stuff with the MLB uh, right now, doing a lot of video stuff. So he's he looks. Have you met him? No. He looks like he's like my brother from another mother. He oh no! He shit. does this work. He's got long hair. He's a white guy. Rarely shaves, but he's he's more bro. Like yo, <laughs> more bro than you, bro. Yeah, way more bro, bro. Uh, wow, bro. So uh, like being forced to be a leader, like being is like being a parent. Yeah. Because you kind of have to go. Oh, uh, I gotta figure this out. Yeah. Well, you gotta take a step back and look at yourself too. You know. There's no difference, leadership and parents. You know, bosses are the parents of the office. Hmm? Yeah. I, I, I was like, treat treat the home a little bit more office business-like with the task manager stuff, with, um, you know, the goal setting, calendar sharing, all that stuff. Well, so I, like I can remember thinking back to a kid hearing that phrase where uh, do as I say, not as I do. Ugh. And I was like, that is bullshit. What are you talking about? Right. No, I want to see you do it, too. What are you talking? Uh, I have to do this this shitty thing, but you're not going to do it. What? That's <laughs> all the same. Uh, yeah, I don't like I like leading by example that maybe and I probably try to do too much instead of delegating a little bit more. I think that's one big thing. Uh, I'm not very type A ish mm -hmm. we're just such in a hurry a lot of the time to get stuff done sometimes it's just like i don't even think about it right sit back and think about it and go well i should do this this and this this and this yeah and if i spent that 30 minutes probably be a lot better mm -hmm. a lot of the time um let's uh any anything else on leadership you got <laughs> no. i mean facebook i don't know we really won't know much about that story until the dust settles in about a month it's so, it's weird to see the numbers that they throw away with the money that they're losing. It was it said like a hundred billion dollars in ten days or something, and I know it's all make up imaginary money, but but still like 
how is that even possible to be able to lose that much and still be operating and all? It, it's just weird to me, you know. One in every five minutes spent online is on Facebook. Yeah, well. So I mean, I, I, from an advertiser standpoint, I know there's there's money going in there. Um, dude, the messenger was the smartest thing they ever did. Why? Because it kept everybody there. So I say, I tell everybody, I tell in client meetings, I say Facebook's like the bad hookup in college. Like everybody's had one. Uh, no one talks about it. All kids have Facebook. They just don't talk about it. But because if you don't have someone's email or contact info, you're friends with them there. Now you, now you can message them. That's true. And Instagram, everybody uses a different handle. They don't use their name. So but I mean, the messenger... So, uh, you're just talking about being able to send messages to people on Facebook. Yeah, but it was the smartest thing to re for retention if you're looking at, like, daily active user retention, right? Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> my favorite thing is when people make a, a huge, uh, a huge like, press release. I call it a social press release of, like, I'm getting off Facebook for Lent because it is bad for me. And it's <laughs> like, you're you're promoting this on Facebook. Yeah. You're not getting off of Facebook. <laughs> Any, like, I get it. It's addictive. They make it addictive. Uh, you know. But it's like our buddy John Paul Labadee, Tampaniac Pictures. He said he was going to get. Brand new logo. Yeah. Kick-ass lightning bolt logo. Looking girthy, yeah. He had, there was a point like a month ago where he said, like, I deleted my Facebook app. I'm like, dude, you run a bit. You can't delete it. Like, you ha your business relies on Facebook. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I took his phone and I was, put it back on there. I was like, what you, you have to have this. You just reminded me. So there is a good tip. Uh, I remembered from that from our friend uh, Samantha Gant of Social Alchemy. Buffer, he could schedule everything through Buffer. He doesn't even have to log into Facebook. He can log in once, get that that pass through authen authenti the authentication. Authent Whatever. I'm tired. Um, that's a long word for me, Auburn grad. Um, but he could schedule everything out in Buffer, and uh, and now Buffer does the thing that. We couldn't do forever. If you ever have managed social media accounts, you can um, schedule through Buffer and post to Instagram. Instagram used to make it really difficult to do that, and now, boom, Buffer Buffer somehow has made made it uh, doable. Yeah, I remember you being much more excited about it than I, I was. Like, what? You can't do that? Uh, you know, what? Well, when and you're ha when you handle a lot of accounts, it's all planning. Yeah. The beauty of digital marketing is like. You do. You can do so much upfront work, mm -hmm. and then schedule everything out. Uh, it, it's Even a, work ahead after that. You can work so far ahead. You can grind one week to do a whole month for a client. Yeah, right? uh, that's the idea. That's why I really like this model as a business. Uh, for Buffer to be able to do that, it's just it was just annoying. And you had like the best you had was Hootsuite would give you a notification to your phone, like, "Hey, it's time to post the thing you already." made and you're in the middle of something you know yeah because a lot like of the work i have an alarm on my phone too you know it's well, like thanks hootsuite well i realize a lot of the work we're doing I, we're, it's much better if we do it in block chunks like if we're doing a website development it's much better to work four hours than like four days for one hour yeah because it's a lot of short-term memory mm -hmm. it's a lot of like uh it's just a lot of like, oh, this would be a good idea. I'm going to maybe come back to that. Yeah, you follow paths. Yeah. and so new paths. So my thing with uh, when you have these ongoing services like like uh, social media marketing and management, that's the thing of like doubling back while you're doing another campaign. is It's just – it's it'll fry your brain a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I would say I just want to go through a little social media kind of – I was kind of – writing some stuff last night late last night and i forgot i kind of had a model for social media marketing and management and then we'll kind of close this out um what were we at we're about 45 almost um so social media here's here's the deal everybody thinks it's silly on a business standpoint but just like uh our, our friend of the program john paul um <clears throat> It should be an integral part of his marketing, right? It's all of his marketing at this point. Because most of most of y'all, most most people trying to do their own thing, you've got to work on what I call the inside out strategy. Pretty simple. 
uh, real estate agents, th they get, they're taught this as the sphere of influence. So you have a circle, you have your friends and family, you have a circle around that, like a solar system uh, kind of path or whatever. Looks like a nipple. Looks like a nip right now. That second ring is, uh, you know, friends of friends. And that third ring's uh, acquaintances, uh, kind of professional colleagues, you know, people you don't really call up, but you could. Now it's like a really weird nipple. Now it's like a big areola. <laughs> Kind of on like a boob. Ringworm around it. Anyways. So just think of three circles uh, like a Russian doll, one inside the other. And so, or a tree, tree stump, whatever you want to do. No, wait. What else? All right. So you want to have that kind of outlook If for most people, doing their own thing. You want to start your own blog. You start with the friends and family you know and get it to them. But And most people go, I don't want to I don't want to bother anybody. It's like, You'll be surprised how many friends are really pumped that you're doing your own thing or doing this passionate thing on the side. Um, you know, like, I, I, f I feel like a lot of people th are embarrassed to try to do that, and that's why they don't want to do the marketing part ever. Something that I have realized is that it's hard to have opportunities to help people, too. Like, I think people in general have, like, this need to help others, and... You, you don't always have these obvious uh, guy broke down in the middle of the road helping push his car down, you know, out of the way sort of situations. You know, like it's OK to to hit your friends up because your friends might be excited to help you. You know, like you don't know. And if they don't like people aren't they don't think negatively about you for hitting them up like they just don't think anything of it. So anytime my friends, I see them start a business, like even if they didn't tell, talk to me personally, I'll call them up now. Because I know where they're at, yeah. And I, I want I go out of my way to go. Hey, man, congrats! On you, it's the best and dumbest thing you'll do. It'll be frustrating. Give me a ring if you ever get in trouble. I fucked up a lot in the last three years. I'm happy to impart any of that knowledge. I, I used to wait for that call and or wait till I see them. And now when I see that you know they started their own thing, I go out of my way to talk to them. Yeah, and you and it makes you feel good. You're helping them. Yeah. You're helping them in a way you actually can help them. Well, both of us believe in the self helpy kind of thing of like, you know, uh, serving, volunteering, uh, helping out. It it does much better for you first. Uh, yeah. It's it, If you want to look at it like you're doing something selfish, sure, because it's going to make you feel good. But it's going to definitely like, you know, it, it'll make you feel so much better to help somebody else. So I believe that's called psychological egoism. Oh. Um. Where you're, you're, you volunteer only to feel good. Fine. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's probably the, end, the only reason I would do it. At the end of the day, it, th there's theory like, uh, I forget the theory, who has the theory, but there's no, no one does anything altruistic to be altruistic. Right. In the end, you want to make yourself happy. And I want to get to heaven. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> My thing is like, um, we laughed a little bit too much on it. People are like, wait a minute, what's that? Uh, heaven is real. So... I'm going to break down social media, marketing, and management really quick. There's, I, I'm going to break it into three big sections that have three parts to each of that. How about that? Are you are you about to break down nine phases? Yeah, real quick. Sure. We can do it. It's not hard. Do you need me here for this? or should I, I mean, our phase one <laughs> is just pre, right? Pre-Fontaine. Pre-planning. Phase two, uh, production, producing, whatever you want to call it. Phase three, post. That's it, right? Pre, pro, Beginning, post. Middle, and end. Right, like everything. Mm -hmm. it's, in, it's in threes for a reason, right? So phase one, the pre, pre-production, call it. Uh, so we got to go, what are the goals? What are the objectives? Give me a business. I'll improv this, this thing. Um, Give me like a local business. A local business. Or just any kind of like small business. A uh, Cuban sandwich shop. Cuban sandwich shop, the um, the sandwich that originated in Tampa, not Miami. Yeah. It's fucking delicious. Look it up. Or Cuba, for that matter. Nope. Happened here, actually. I know. <laughs> no, I'm saying, like, but you made, say it like it's obviously not Miami. Oh, well, I just, I, I got a beef with Miami. So, objectives, all right? Cuban sandwich shop. We got to promote. We got to get the word out there. The objective is we got to get people through that doorway, right? Mm. We got to bring people from online 
to offline in our plays. Okay, so uh, local awareness is kind of what Facebook would call it. Um, you know, on Google Maps, we got to make sure we're looking good over there. But I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep this to like Facebook. Let's just do that because most people know a little bit more about that. But having all of your uh, Legion, ducks in a row across all social media also important. Right. Well, yeah. Well, integrated marketing, holistic approach. We can get to that later. That's a little bit more advanced. But you're right. Yes. Uh, but let's call it lead generation, right? Because that's what it is. Lead generation, right? We want to get customers. So, what uh, what are the goals? What are the what they call KPIs, key performance indicators? How can we tell from what we're doing online that's going to bring people in? We might do an offer, mm -hmm. right? Two for one, happy hour. We might we might do uh, mention this mention this Facebook ad to get a dollar off. That way we can track it, right? Mm -hmm. Those are indicators. It, all all the goals and KPIs, it's all about ROI. All those all those stats. All the they go. Oh, we're getting a lot of people engaging on this uh, on our social media stuff. Great. Well, have you, have have you looked at the trend? Money? Yeah. Right. And have you been able to talk to all the customers coming in and figured out how they found out about you? Because mm -hmm. you're going to do. F uh, you're right in the sense that you're going to do like fifteen different tactics. You're going to have a sandwich board outside, no pun intended, for a sandwich shop. Uh, people might, you just might want have walk up traffic from that. Mm -hmm. Signage, exterior signage, that's one big thing that people underrate all the time. You drive by a place in the neighborhood, you're like, oh, I'm going to go there one day. Like, yeah. I don't, people underrate signage. I don't, I don't understand it. And the name. They underrate the name. Right. That too. Um, easy name to spell, easy name to say, uh, like in conversation. Oh, you got to go here. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, all right. So taking it from two people whose companies Tampaniac and Tokobaka <laughs> <laughs> Consulting. Yeah. Well, so just you know, we learned our lesson. Mine was an uphill battle. <laughs> mine was like, if, uh, if we if we can get people to understand what it is, it's good. All right. So you got you got your objective, lead generation. You've got uh, metrics, whatever your goals, your stats. You got to go. Hey, we need to get to there, right? If we're going to spend X amount of money or time which equals money, if you know your what your dollar per hour is labor-wise, we got to get twice as much back. we got to get three times as much back. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the indicators that are going to tell us we're on our way? Is it going to be clicks? Is it going to be calls? Uh, all right, so objectives, goals. Now we got to figure out the audience, right? So we're B2C, and we're going to hit lunchtime crowd within a three mile radius. That's mm -hmm. probably a group, right? Lunch crowd, three miles. Cause that's about as far maybe as people go. You figure out that radius. When you say lunch crowd, you're talking about timing of the, the day. Okay. Yeah, th um, just advertise. I mean, oh, like I'm just talking about who's the target audience. Oh, okay. So you, it could be set by time like that and time and day. It could be, um, okay. Who eats Cuban sandwiches the most, uh, I'd have to think about this. Who do you think? Like uh, probably white guys like us. Yeah, me. Um, so mid thirties white guys. Um, probably older. There's a probably a group of fifty five year old guys probably in that range. I don't feel like a lot of women I see eating a lot of Cuban sandwiches. I probably didn't choose the best business. No, no, no it's fine. Just, uh, just because nope. everybody eats, and it, who doesn't like a Cuban sandwich? It's a sandwich shop, but uh, for. For funsies, because I want people to look up the Cuban sandwich. It is amazing. Um, and so we're going to go B to C. We've got uh, dudes in their mid-30s. We've got older gents, 50s. Uh, maybe maybe we make a uh, – maybe we tailor a Cuban that's like an 80-calorie Cuban. It's a really small one. And we Cubanito? We tailor that to the female crowd. Then we do a uh, – maybe we do a kid's Cuban, a little bebita. <laughs> A Cuban, a baby Cuban. I already used my <laughs> all my <laughs> Spanish. So that's the B two C crowd. People forget you could probably you probably make more money and more legit money in the B two B. When you think of a sandwich shop, you just think B two C, right? Yeah. But B two B is where you can make a lot of your dough. Yeah, and catering, catering <laughs> businesses. Uh, they want something to br be brought in. There's big campuses of office parks and stuff. Try to make deals 
around the the hard hours, right? There's boring ass lunch meetings that are catered every day in every city around the world. Yep. Somebody's got to eat. So we um we're gonna we're gonna get into phase two. So that's all like. Oh, I was only phase one. Uh-huh. This it'll move quicker. Okay. We're, we go big to small, right? I don't know. So the phase two, the the production, the actual producing, creative, one, content, two, they're separate, and three is platform. Now, now these aren't in order; they're interchangeable because you might have something with platform, then you have to make the content, then the creative. What are you talking about for platform? So platform, you got Facebook, you got LinkedIn, okay. you got Instagram. Pinterest, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook. We're going to stay there. We're going to stick with that because food porn always plays on that. Yep. We know that. Yep. We just know that anecdotally. I don't have to look it up, but I can probably find some stats if I need to. Content, what food porn, right? That's the creative. That's your number one creative. Mm-hmm. You're the editor of your own magazine. What's on the cover of O Magazine? Oprah. Every month. She made it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... That's the cover story. It's always food porn for us. What are what's the Sports Illustrated faces in the crowd? Um, what, so what's our other content behind the scenes? Always good content. People, I don't know why people love seeing behind the scenes of every business, right? Mm-hmm. Um, testimonials. Testimonials are great. Yeah, we we do that for a lot of clients where we'll we'll pull a review they good review they got and then we'll make it into a graphic, a video, um, and if we can get them on video, even better too. Um, Content, uh, content I use as like medium, so image, um, GIF, video, audio. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about it, and the way you, you, uh, you edit it. So if you're doing like uh, Pinterest, like format, formatting, yeah. Uh, Pinterest, you're gonna go, you're gonna go portrait. Right. Facebook, some Facebook ads, the best ones, they take up the whole phone. Mm-hmm. So you want that portrait, right? Um, uh, Instagram's like square. Instagram now is longer too, and you might make. A oh, yeah, you're right. So depending think about depending on the platform, whatever is usually the newest feature they're pushing is the thing that you're gonna get the best bang for your buck. Yeah. So when Facebook really started putting video out, they're like, "We're gonna be the number. T- we're gonna try to beat YouTube in video because YouTube's the number two search engine." Mm-hmm. in the world and so they go okay we're gonna really jack up video like crazy so that means if you advertise you boost a post uh you're gonna get way more bang for your buck okay so that's it phase two Psh, done done the creative you guys know it food porn all right phase three right we gotta look at what we're we gotta engage we got quality control so we gotta look at what's going on who's talking shit you know we got to make sure we're on top of that. Mm-hmm. Who had a bad time? Who gave us a one star? We got to reply to that immediately. Yes. Or you could use our uh, preferred partner, BirdEye, and you can delete that. Yeah. But you got to go through us, or you can pay for the the whole agency fee yourself. I don't yeah. Care. Um, quality control check, engagement, customer service online. It doesn't take much, but there's a way to bottleneck all those messages to one place, so that you're not having to check in 15 different accounts. All right. How do you do that? Um, you can use Zapier or IFTTT and mm-hmm. create these recipes to, uh, to have it. We have them go to Slack if we're on our game. Right. All okay. right. Quality control. Uh, let's call it quality control with engagement. We're going to go at uh, analysis, right? So we're going to look at how much we've done. We've got to look back. This is a lot of people don't do with marketing. They make a plan, and then they never go, all right, in a month, we've got to look at what we did. And yeah. kind of annotate it, all right. right? So it's like, all right, we were doing a lot of food porn in week two of this month, and we got way more people in. Now, I do it like a bet. I go, I bet that food porn kind of engagement has been making people come in the door and then have someone else... Uh, debate you on it. Find someone just to be the devil's advocate, right? What online? You mean? No, 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 no. Like in your, uh, in your, in your employees or oh, oh, oh. or friends or something. Like, hey, I'm looking at our marketing stats. I think online. A good leader always creates uh, conflict amongst its employees. <laughs> or challenge. 
<laughs> challenge me. I always say that. Challenge me. I tell clients, challenge me all the time. Yeah, but you say it like a lot more aggressive and I louder do. in the meetings. I'm like Napoleon syndrome. Challenge me. And then my traps go up. You ever had your shit pushed in? <laughs> all right. And then uh, last thing is uh, refine. So you got the analysis. You looked at the stats. Hey, I got a lot of likes on the page, but we, we're not getting a lot of people through the door. Okay, what does a like mean? What is it, you know, you've done the analysis. You're kind of thinking logically, horse sense, all that stuff. Now you refine. Now you go back to phase one and go, okay, we're not, are we hitting the objectives? Or have we been better? Have we gotten sales up by spending an hour every day trying to do stuff online? Mm -hmm. Or five hours a week, mm -hmm. right, I call it. Because uh, it's better to do it in one flood. Um, Analyze the analysis. And that's it. You know, that's uh, that's how I, I, this came out of frustration of trying to educate this whole kind of model. And it came out of just, just repetition of like, this is how I see it. You, if you do advertising, the complexity of advertising, throw in probably maybe one or two more phases on, on top of that for social media ads. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's that a lot, sense. I know, but uh, people can rewind. I can definitely see why you wanted to use the uh, the uh, emoticons and icons and things to represent this stuff. Yeah, we're uh, so that it's not all so boring. It's it it can be very boring, but it's it's one of those things that like uh, when we get the uh, tutorial kind of video set up a little bit better, then we can kind of show some of this while we're doing the podcast too. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think uh, that'll help. If, uh, what is it, a digital whiteboard where you can draw on it like a stylus? Yeah. Um, at least that, something like that we can get. I think like we can. Telestrator, John Madden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boom. And then the old uh, ambulance comes out. <laughs> and it takes 12 minutes to get someone off the field. Exactly. Um, yeah, but, I mean, that's the thing. We need to take our own advice and do it for this podcast. So um, we're on Facebook. Go on the Facebook page. Share this episode out um you know sh tell try to f i want you to close your eyes if not while you're driving or jogging but if you're listening try to close your eyes think of a friend that you can send this podcast to and that'll count as your volunteer which which of your friends likes to talk about hemorrhoids all who's of them? that person i not all your, your cool friend, friends. not us not you and i all your cool friends right exactly. who can't handle 90 seconds of hemorrhoid talk i know alfonso appreciates it I, I heard him say thank you i know <laughs> if it were up to me, I'd have my own hemorrhoid podcast. Hey, maybe you don't want to send the Facebook page. Maybe you want to stay dark and on Messenger. We're on Spotify. I, I hear a lot more promotion for podcasts on Spotify. It's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So we're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcast app. We're on iTunes. What else are we on? We're on Laughable. La the Laughable app where you can tag us as comedians if we ever guest it on other people's podcasts, which we, we will soon. Um we're on oh, Vimeo. Got, yeah. If you or video, you're uh, that Vimeo guy. Vimeo and YouTube. You're the twenty thousand people that go on Vimeo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that it? No, <laughs> but it's they're not. There's not a lot of people looking over there for stuff. Yeah, you don't yeah. really check into Vimeo. They're gonna be the third. They're gonna be the third player, I think. Um, uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think that's it. We need to get on Twitch. I think. Well, I mean, we get LinkedIn. We do that stuff. Oh, LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And we'll get the Facebook group. Oh, sweatequitypod.com. Yeah, we got a website that sh takes you right to all of it. That helps. And that's all the plugs. Um, why don't you say something about leadership while I replug this in? And Jeez, every time? You're being a bad leader right now. How about that? By not preparing to plug in the cord. Well, I mean, come on. I, gotta, I don't want my phone to ring on my laptop. It's you been know. ringing left and right. Well, I hope it worked. You Sorry, know. I don't want to bring you down. I feel like you just, just broke you. You bum me out. I'm going to go take a nap. Rage nap. Rage.